So electron configurations describe how electrons are distributed around an atom. And electrons are contained in orbitals, okay? So up here in this green arrow diagram, I've described the order in which electrons fill orbitals. So first electrons are gonna fill the 1s orbital, then they fill the 2s orbital, then they fill the 2p, then the 3s, then they fill into the 3p and the 4s. And what you need to know is that the s level contains one orbital, the p level contains three orbitals, the d level contains five, and the f level contains seven orbitals. And each orbital can ho hold two electrons. So it sounds very confusing, but just for now, think about an orbital as basically a container for two electrons that can hold two electrons. And you can show this filling order on the periodic table quite nicely. Um, you can split the periodic table into what are called S, P, D, and F blocks for the S, P, D, and F levels. So if you just Google S, P, D, F periodic table, uh, you'll find a picture like this. And it's very useful for writing electron configurations. So the S block consists of this blue block over here, in addition to this helium right here, the P block is this red block here, kind of in the middle. The D block is this blue box over here. And then the F block is the green box down here. So the most common way you will see electron configurations written is in the expanded electron configuration form. So it's very easy to do this as long as you have a periodic table. So I've written out the electron configurations for oxygen and bromine, and I wanna show you how I got them. So for oxygen, I wrote in oxygen is right here. And if you have a periodic table, you would know that. You know, you know oxygen is in group six right here, right at the top in the, the second row. And to write its electron configuration, we simply read the periodic table from left to right, row by row, just like you would read a book. So we start at the top left. We have one electron in our 1s orbital. Then we go to the right. We have another electron in our 1s orbital. So now our s level is filled because we know s has one orbital. We put two electrons in it. So now that's filled. So 1s2. Then we go down to the next row just like we would when we're reading a book. Now we put one electron in our 2s orbital. Another electron in our 2s orbital. So 2s, again, we know s only has one orbital, so now the 2s orbital is filled with two electrons, because each orbital contains two electrons. Then we move to the right, so now we're in 2p. So 2p, one electron, 2, 3, 4 to get to oxygen, so 2p, 4. So you're really just recording how many electrons you had to get to get to your element, because each element that goes by accumulates one additional electron. And this notation simply describes how they're placed into their orbitals. And you notice we're following this general pattern here. Okay, moving on to bromine. So actually with bromine, I did not label that on the periodic table. And since you have the electron configuration, you should be able to find it on the periodic table. You actually may be asked to do this, and it's, it's very easy. So 1s2 means we had these two electrons, then we went to the next row, 2s2, so we filled in these two electrons, then 2p6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we filled in all those, then 3s2, so 1, 2, we filled in those, then 3p6, so we filled in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of those, 4s2, 2 of those, 3d10, all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of those, and then 4p5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So bromine is right there. That is bromine's expanded electron configuration. So you can imagine once you get to some of the later elements on the periodic table, uh, these expanded electron configurations are going to become extremely long. So chemists have uh, come up with a method to abbreviate the electron configurations by using noble gases in the notation. So let me explain how this works. So for example, nitrogen. So we could write nitrogen's expanded electron configuration. We just learned how to do that. So it's right here. So we could say it's 1s2, 2s2, 
2p3, right? But instead of writing that 1s2, we can save some space by just saying helium, right? We know helium is right here. So instead of saying 1s2, we'll just put helium and then continue on, okay? So this example didn't save us, save us that much space, but let me show you how it can really uh, start to help you out. So sulfur, so sulfur is further down than nitrogen. And the way that we can abbreviate this is we can use a later noble gas, neon. So neon is right here. So when we see bracket neon, that means we're, we're already right here. We're starting right here and then we count from the next row. So neon implies 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So instead of writing 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, we just write neon. Then we go on 3s2, 3p1234. So sulfur is right here. Okay, so I hope you see how you can use noble gases to abbreviate and save space with electron configurations. And notice how we're always following this filling pattern. We cannot skip around. We have to go in this specific order. Finally, you may see electron configurations written in orbital notation. And that's what this looks like. So I did an example, manganese. So manganese, its electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Each one of these arrows, there's two here, two here, two, four, six here, and two here. Each one of these arrows is an electron, and each kind of platform here is an orbital. So we know each orbital contains two electrons. So that means manganese contains one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve electrons total. And this shows how they're distributed into manganese's electron orbitals. And notice how it follows this pattern here. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, and then we didn't, we actually didn't get to 3p, but if we did, we would continue on in this order. Okay, and then we can do the same thing for nitrogen. So we know nitrogen has an electron configuration of 1s2 or helium, 2s2, 2p3, and that's what that would look like in orbital notation. So I'll end this video by mentioning two important exceptions to the filling order that we mentioned up here. So remember, this is the order in which orbitals are filled with electrons. But the two exceptions to this are copper and chromium. So I've written these two elements up here in the periodic table. Here's chromium and here's copper. And I went ahead and wrote out their expanded electron configurations. So you can see how I would have arrived at these. I went 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then 3d4 for chromium, and 3d9 for copper. So why are these exceptions? Well, actually, what I've written here is not correct. These are exceptions. This is what you would think copper and chromium would be. But actually, look at where they are. Look at where they end up. So chromium and copper, copper is one electron away from having a full 3D orbital, right? If it just had one more electron, it would have a full 3D orbital. So actually, that is so much more stable that what it does is it actually steals an electron from this 4s2 making it a 4s1 and uses it to fill the d orbital, making it 3d10. And similarly, chromium is one electron away from having a perfectly half-filled 3d orbital. This is half-filled right here. So if it just had one more to make 3d5, it becomes more stable. So it's going to steal one, just like we did up there, from the 4s, making it 4s1, 3d5. So see how that's an exception? Normally, we would fill our 4s completely before moving on to 3d. But here, we only put one electron in our 4s, and then we fill our 3d. So notice here how these are pretty long electron configurations. Can you think about how we might be able to shorten these? Well, we can abbreviate these by using the noble gas argon. So if we simply erase up to 3p6, because that's where argon is, and just write bracket argon, then we will have an abbreviated 
electron configuration, saving us a lot of space. So I would write it like that. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, if you're interested in tutoring, please contact me at facebook.com slash tutoring, and I'll see you guys in the next video.